All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to another sweep series here. Uh, it feels like I haven't done this in a while. Uh, I'm flying solo today, uh, so it's just me over here, manning the controls. I got Seth uh, kind of in the back scenes of things to help me out because I could really blow things up. Uh, but other than that, we'll see uh, if we get a smooth ride here. I wanted to do something a little bit different today, though. Um, and I'll explain to you in a minute in regards to that. Just one thing I wanted to bring up, because uh, I don't know if, and I know a lot of you members are on here as well. Uh, good to see you guys, but even some of you newcomers, it's an easy web address, wallstreetjesus.com. All right, and not only the advertisements and trying to sell you something here, but if you click on the top, we got action review, strategy, market updates. Um, and a lot of you will find, this is the stuff I post on Twitter sometimes, uh, go over, going over some of the flow, uh, some of the flow we've seen in the past, you know, some charts of sweeps and uh, breaking down of the action. So, you know, it's free, open to the public, uh, plan on doing something like this for members as well, kind of like um, a diary of wise guy sweeps in a sense, but uh, this particular site, this particular page is open to all you guys, uh, and you can go back and scroll through some of the action every day. I post it, I uh, post some open interest every morning, uh, the action and review gets posted on here, uh, and then when I go home, sit on the couch, watch a ball game, I'll um, post some charts and some flow, so some of you guys might find that interesting. All right, and uh, you got the action review here, you got... Uh, the strategy section, uh, this is kind of my stuff I rambled off the top of my head of ways to use the wise guy um, activity and stuff like that for sentiment uh, and had the same Lucci gang draw it up in like a blog form. So, uh, you know, telling you a little bit behind what's, what's a sweep and so forth. So some of you new guys especially can find um, uh, an interest here. All right, so... Today what I want to go over, again, we got a mixture of people who are already members of the Steam Room, uh, guys who know me off Twitter, and some of you may be new. Uh, but what I wanted to hit on first off, because uh, we were going to talk a little bit about the flow, some of the, you know, some of the recent wise guy activity we see, we've been seeing over the last week or so. Um, but before I do that, okay, we, when we do the sweep series, we offer uh, half off, you can see here, the first month of the Steam Room. Now, the Steam Room is basically a trading room, chat room, uh, where now we got new technology coming in, so it's going to be a lot smoother. Audio, video, I'm going to be on every morning. I'm on during the hours, market hours, giving play-by-play -play commentary on um, all the wise guy activity that I'm seeing. Uh, starting, I'm hoping this midweek, um, we're going to be smooth video coming in as well. Uh, so I'll be able to show the indicators and the flow and all that stuff uh, in real time. Okay, so this is the Steam Room, and it comes with private Twitter. Uh, so if you subscribe to the Steam Room, you get private Twitter as well, uh, and that comes in handy. You know, that's mostly flow, brief little commentary, uh, but if you're on the go, you know, Twitter is easy to access. Uh, so that's included with this as well, okay? So when we do the sweep series, uh, we offer a half off the first month. Uh, that's, you know, for the whole entire month. And um, and then you renew, you know, at, at the normal price, okay? But what I wanted to do a little bit different about uh, this webinar than some of the other sweep webinars we've done in the past, uh, because here's the problem. Uh, a lot of new guys come into the Steam Room. Okay, where a lot of new guys tune into uh, this particular webinar. And basically, I get the most popular question I get asked is about a certain order and a particular name. So, for example, I'll get, you know, Apple source sweep and just a basic question. Uh, I saw Apple catch a cool buyer, is it going higher? Okay, and you know, those of you who are more experienced, especially with wise guy activity, know, you know, that's almost an impossible question to answer because so many different types of traders out there. Okay, so I wanted to start off this webinar very briefly. I don't want to go into too much detail. Maybe we can um, go into detail and elaborate on these things 
you know, future webinars, but I uh, just basically go through these five key commandments. Okay, so anybody thinking about signing up, uh, anybody new to Wise Guy Activity, or even members, you guys hear me talk about this all the time, um, anybody who is new and decides to join the Steam Room, I always ask, you know, what type of trader you are. I think that's the most important question. So we'll touch on this, then we'll swing over into uh, some of the recent activity, uh, talk about market conditions, the environment, uh, and we'll call it a day, all right? Uh, but these basically are the five most important things I think any trader out there who's looking to take a serious approach in this game um, has figured out before they start pushing buttons. Okay, if you expect to find any success, any consistency in this game, I think these five things in particular you have to have ironed out. Um, otherwise, you're basically treating the game as a hobby, and that's fine. You know. Listen, I say it all the time, I'm a degenerate gambler myself, okay? I go to the racetrack, I know I'm losing money. I have a good time, but I'm not pissed off when the horse I put $100 to win on finishes dead last, right? Because I, I know I can't win at the game, I do it because I enjoy it, as sick as they may sound, all right? If that is your intention when it comes to trading the market, if you just enjoy it, you're playing it nice and easy, you have fun playing earnings, you have fun trading just a high beta, Fang, Apple, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking to take or you're looking to be serious about this game, uh, possibly make a living out of this game, these are definitely five commandments that you have to have figured out at some point before you go anywhere in this game. Okay, otherwise you're going to spin your wheels and you're going to realize one of these five things you're having the trouble with. Okay, so let's take the first one um, pretty simply and it's know what type of player you are, okay, or intend on being, what type of player you want to be in this game. And it sounds silly, but without that, I mean, think about how much trouble you could get in. Okay, what I mean by this is this I know I'm a day trader. Okay, so I'm doing and looking at totally different things throughout the day on a day-to-day -day basis in this market uh, that a swing trader, investor, position trader, contrarian trader would do, all right? So you may be a swing trader. Like I said, you may be, you know, you're trading high risk-reward positions. You may be just an earnings player, you know. You may be the home run type player that likes to play options and you're, you know, you're looking for that high risk reward, uh, but not that high win ratio. But you need to know what the hell you're looking to do in this game before you start coming in on a day-to-day -day basis and saying, okay, I'm going to buy Apple off a of sweeper or I'm going to trade, you know, spy off uh, the big call buyer. Okay. And like for me, for example, I mean, and this goes into number two, it's understanding, you know, what you need to do as that particular trader to find any success and consistency. And again, I'll use me as an example because it's easy. As a day trader, okay, I know exactly what I need to do each and every day for me to, to be consistent and stay on course to find success. All right. I know that no matter how big of a bet or how sharp of a sweep is in XYZ that if it pulls on me and I need to stop myself out, excuse my French, but I couldn't give two shits about the bet. You understand? Where if you're a position trader, okay, you might take a different approach with that bet and say, all right, maybe I'd buy a little now if it comes in. You know, I'm fortunate for that. That's, that's good for me. I'll be looking to add a little bit more into weakness. You understand? So right there, I mean, between the short-term trader, the day trader, and the position trader, think about that drastic difference. You know, I'm looking for that instant momentum, and that's, I mean, basically, that's the only question I ask myself. With every alert I see, it's a simple question. Can I see enough momentum out of that action, out of that steam? for me to at least scalp or get a trade out of it. It's that simple for me. 
okay, for my style, where, again, if you're a, a position trader, you're asking different questions there. You know, if you're a contrarian type player where you're looking to buy, you know, um, wise guy, bullish wise guy activity into a name where there's that's washed out sentiment wise, okay, that everyone's bearish on, okay, you got to understand that you're going against the trend there, so you may be early. So it may be prudent to start piecing in rather than going all in when you see some wise guy action. Okay, and that's what I mean by number two on there. These are things you have to have already mapped out ahead of time. It's impossible to do on the fly in the heat of the action when all the emotions wrapped up um, and make these decisions. You have to understand, you know, what your intentions are, what you're looking to do. All right, I'm scalping, I'm day trading. Uh, you know, this is a, a longer term position. And then figure out the things you need to do to find success trading that way. Um, three is important too. I see it all the time. And I notice it more now than, you know, I, I guess before I was in this steam room and seeing a, a variety of different traders. But I see so many people get so emotional yeah, almost instantly in a name. And a lot of times, it's just simply because they're too large. You know, they're probably just too big in that position. And if you're trying to find a game plan and an approach that you're going to find success in, the last thing you should be looking at, okay, or looking for is how much money you're going to make behind each and every trade you do. Okay, especially if you're new and this is – a new game plan that you're devising, a new, you know, strategy you've come up with, you're not looking to get rich off one trade. You're not looking to break the, break, the, uh, break the bank off one trade. If you are, you are on the wrong side of the planet when it comes to this. Okay, because consistency and, you know, finding the success of consistency means over the course of a number of trades, through different market environments, different periods of time. There'll be winners, there'll be losers, there'll be some big winners, some small losers. It's not about the 20 grand hit you made on the one trade. That means nothing. So especially if you're starting off and this is a new game plan, you want to take it nice and easy. You want to stay small. Forget about the amount of money you're going to make initially because you're looking to see if you got something that works. And the other thing, when you're too large, okay, and you're not staying small enough, besides getting emotionally wrapped up, you're not going to give your strategy enough time to succeed. Yeah, that's another thing I notice a lot. You run into a loser, and because that loser really stung, that's it. All of a sudden, now you're playing, you know, Baba earnings to make that money back. So again. The name of the game, everybody loses in this game. I know it's cliche. I say it a lot, but people don't realize that. There's always going to be a loss somewhere, somehow. You might be unlucky. It might be the first two trades you make are losers. That doesn't mean that your strategy doesn't work. You know, so by staying smaller, you will be more patient. You give your strategy enough room to breathe, and this way, um, you get a better idea of whether you're onto something that works. And again, the name of the game there is not to get rich quickly, okay? Not even get rich, not to make a lot of money quickly. You're trying to figure out a strategy that you could come in here every day, and that's all you're focused on is basically that strategy. So take it nice and easy. All right, so number four on here I have uh, the most important part is what I just mentioned. Once you figured this stuff out, okay? Once you know, okay, I'm going to be a day trader. This is what I got to do. I got to make sure I limit my risk to the downside. I got to make sure I'm not holding anything overnight if I'm a day trader. I'm clean at the end of the day, okay? I got to understand that one day there may be nothing but scratch trades. I lose a little money. The next day I may make a little money. The following day I may have a great day, make a decent amount of money. 
then lose money again. That's all part of the game, and I'm prepared for it. Okay? I understand I have to deal with that to find consistency and success. Okay? So once you've ironed out what you're looking to do and what you need to do to find success, then the most important thing is to come in every single day. And as I would like to say, just chop wood. Okay? What I mean by that is you come in, you have your game plan mapped out, right? You have your risk management mapped out. You know what you need to do. Every day you're coming in, when things set up, you fire. You're not concerned. You're already prepared, whether it's a loser, a winner, a scratch. Everything's ironed out. And your job is to come in every day and do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. That simple. Okay? You block out the noise, you block out the healthcare nonsense, the Trump nonsense, the Democrats talking about Russia. You block out all that shit, and all day long you come in and you just focus on the things you need to do. And when you're set when your setups align, you have your game plan in place, and you look to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. And along the way, you're gonna you're gonna tinker with things, right? You're gonna fool around with little things here and there. Oh, you know what? If if I just focused on this a little bit more, um, that'll keep me away from, uh, you know, certain times where I don't need to play. Like little stuff like that, you're going to learn every every day, every week, every month. You're always learning in this game. Okay, but there's a difference between learning and deviating from a strategy and starting to get involved in every little thing you hear. Okay, and you, you'll see that a lot. What I mean by that in simple English, you have traders, they come in, they're trading a certain strategy, but then they notice something, you know, on CNBC, or they hear some news, a rumor about OPEC, and they, you know, oil looks vulnerable here. So even though... Uh, you know, shorting is not in my strategy. It looks like oil really is going to fall apart here. So I'm going to buy some puts. Yeah, it, it's so easy to get caught up in the noise. But if you understand that it's not about one trade, that one trade is not going to make or break you. It's actually meaningless. It's the whole bowl of wax you're looking at. And you're looking, again, for consistency, more winners than losers you'll learn that you don't even need to get wrapped up in this stuff. Like, listen, I see Micron every day catch a missile, okay, every single day. Now, yeah, would it hurt me to play some Micron calls into earnings? No, it wouldn't hurt. But, you know, I am so content where I am right now that it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. Because chances are I'm not going to take a big enough shot to make a dent. All right, so why even look to deviate from what I know I do best, you know, and have learned to come in and master on a day-to-day -day basis? And, again, staying away from the micron, which ended up working out, but that will keep me away from the next one that may shit the bed. You understand? So that's, that's basically the approach you need to take is once you ironed out one, two, and three on this list, you just come in and you want the repetition. I know a couple of you guys are baseball guys like me. I know, Jim, you're a baseball guy. It, you know, just like that baseball player, what's he do? Okay, or well, golf. You guys probably play golf. It's the same thing. I mean, the baseball player goes in the cage and just takes swings and swings you know, he just wants to get to the point where he gets that swing. He's not even thinking about it. Because in baseball, you don't even have the time to really think. You're going to hit a 98-mile-per-hour fastball or just on a breaking ball, if it happens to be one. I still don't know how they do that. But, you know, so they just go in the cage, and they want to master that swing to get it to the point, you know, to the point at the level where they want it. So during live action, in the heat of the moment, in the heat of all that emotion, that swing is just there. That swing is just there. And they take the same approach. Sometimes 
eight hours, they can hit a ball, they'll only go to the warning track and get caught, they'll line out to the shortstop, they'll hit the board hard, but more than 30% of the time, that ball is going to dunk in for a hit, and they're going to get paid a multi-million dollar contract for that. You know, and golf is the same thing. How many times does a golfer go and go to the range and just swing? You know, just swing. So, again, if you're looking to take a serious approach in this game, these are the things you need to do. It's just like any profession. It's just like sports or anything else. You know, you look to master what you're good at, and you come in every day and just chop wood. You put the, bl the blinkers on, the blinders on, and you try to find consistency. Okay, and the last one on here, and we can talk a little bit about the market and take some questions. I want to leave some time for that. Uh, but the last one on here is patience. Okay, I'm not talking about patience sitting in a stock. I'm not talking about that patience. I'm talking about you need to have patience with your strategy, with your game plan. You need to actually give yourself and your strategy some time to see if you really have something here that works. Perfect point is the market we just came out of, all right? When you have a market that does this, everybody's making money. Unless you're a wise guy and you're shorting the trend, or you're an idiot, everybody's making money. The market goes up every single day. Okay, so obviously no matter what type of strategy you have, okay, like I said, if it's a long strategy, obviously, but no matter what type of strategy you have, you're going to find some, some success. Okay, some may find a little more success than others. Some may have caught a, a, been fortunate, more fortunate than others. That's all part of the game. But most likely you've made some money in this type of market. So now, if you just base your strategy off what you did in this environment, you're going to think you're a guru. And that's what a lot of traders do, right? What do they do? They make some money in this trend, and then as soon as the chop comes or as soon as some polar correction comes, they give it all back and then some because there's no adjustment. They think they have something that works all the time. Why? They just evaluated this period. That's it. So you have to be patient, okay? And this way you can analyze properly, you know, what you're doing and how your game plan performs in every environment. In every environment. Okay? Because your part of your success, part of what makes your strategy successful may mean that when a market's not trending and you're choppy, all right, or the things you look at show you that it's a little bit tougher, let's say, let's say hypothetically you're a swing trader, right? This is a great time. Early in a trend's a great time to be long, hold for a couple of days. You have things taking off to the moon. Who's better than you? Okay. Now you end up in a little choppiness here. Can you have the same expectations? Can you take can you have the same exact approach? No. Okay, so these are the things that you need to evaluate, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is by being patient and giving what you do time. And that, that goes for any strategy out there. You'll understand and you'll realize, all right, when the market's trending, you know, it looks like I fare better. Yeah. Maybe I take down the risk. Maybe I take down the number of positions. Maybe I go totally in cash. Maybe, you know, these are the things you're going to start to understand. You know, maybe I'm more concerned about protecting my capital than making money when things get a little dicey. You know, for me, as a day trader, I mean, it's actually the opposite of a swing trader in the sense where I have less success when the market's strong, believe it or not. And if you're, you know, a lot of the guys in the room can attest because they know exactly what I'm talking about. When a market gaps up, okay, I've, over my experience, I've had a really tough time 
day trading off wise guy activity and finding any success in gap ups. So what do I do now? I'm a lot more selective. I hardly even trade in gap ups. You know, I'm more aggressive into weakness. All right, so that's what, you know, I was trying to get at initially when we first started this webinar. That's a perfect point right there of how each and every trader is different, that there's no one blanket answer or statement that any strategy can give you that's going to apply to everybody. But again, going back to uh, this list here, that is one and two, knowing what type of player you are, what you do best, what are your strengths, okay, what type of trader you want to be. Maybe you're an investor, you're not even a trader. You know, you see on Twitter, on social media a lot, people throw out these nonsense, old 1920 style statements and quotes from these investors and Warren Buffett. What Warren Buffett does doesn't apply to 99% of us right now here. We're not buying hold guys, we're not investors, we're not buying stakes in companies. The majority of us are traders. You know, so you have to figure out. It's fine to listen, okay? It's fine to take a little bit from each and everybody out there and see if it applies to you, see if it may help you. But, you know, you see it so much now more than ever. I notice that, you know, people throw these sayings out. Here's one that used to irritate me because if I did it, forget it. I'd be on the street with a cup. Let your winners run. Let my winners run. If I let every winner that I had run, I'd be dead. 90% of my winners would turn into scratches. You know what I mean? So, that's again, maybe if you're um, a position trader and you're holding over the course of months and or you're a trend trader, that would apply? Of course that would apply. But my point is it doesn't apply to every type of trader out there. All right, so that's where you got to know what you need to do to find success according to what type of player you are. Okay, and we're seeing that now in the market, um, and that's why I wanted to start off with this initially, um, because we're seeing it right in front of our eyes right now. Let me see what's the best chart I could get on here just to show you guys. That one's too long. It annoys me. Let me get this one. All right, so let's take uh, the market now, for example. Okay. You know, we're talking on a day-to-day -day basis uh, of recent how, you know, we are not in this anymore, right? It's pretty obvious. We are not in this strong trend up every day type environment. Okay, so we got to understand what type of market we're in right now, a choppy type consolidation. So we can't do the things we're doing here. All right, so here in this type of market, you have to be quicker in a sense. Okay, you have to look to buy weakness and sell that rip. And, you know, we talk about this um, uh, during the day, the aftermarket webinars constantly, that if you can't take advantage of that, okay, if you can't look to buy that weakness and sell that squeeze for whatever reason, if you don't have the time, you're not around, uh, you're doing something else, your account size maybe is not suited for that, that's totally fine. It's totally fine not to do anything, okay? But that's the playbook right now. That's the playbook, because if you're buying weakness and you're letting your winners run, this obviously hasn't been or is not the environment to do that. Okay, so again, if you can't trade a certain way in what the market's willing to give you, the market always is willing to give you something. Okay, there's always a playbook out there. There's always a trade. There are times when, you know, there's not, especially on the long side. Maybe you either short or sit in cash, but it's rare. You know, more than not, there's something to trade out there. Um, it's just a matter of whether you can take advantage of it. 
And, you know, that's what we're looking at now. So, I mean, what we've been focused on in the room right now um, is basically buying the flush, okay, looking when they're selling the market and sentiment lines up with the flow, okay. In simple English, uh, again, I don't have uh, the stuff in front of me, but I got uh, this will do its job. Where is it? Hold on. Okay. So this is a, a simple put the call here. So it gives you an idea. All right. So what we're looking for in the room on a day-to-day -day basis is when the market, the public is selling, okay, and bearish, and we can see that with both price, right, the market selling red, and a put the call spike, meaning they're lining up on the other side, and the smart money, the sweepers, are buying into that, that's where we're looking for an entry, okay? And then what we look to do now, we're not looking for new highs. We're looking for basically, let me go, oh, here's a spy chart you can see here. We're basically looking for a squeeze to squeeze into. That's it. All right, so here, for example, I don't know if you guys could see that because I got a line chart up there, but hold on. All right, here, for example, we had that sell day. Okay, we had a spike in the intraday put the call, a couple of the sentiment things we look at in the option market, you know, it's all around options. Uh, we're telling us people were getting a little too bearish. Whether they're protecting or playing for downside, they're getting a little too bearish. Okay, so now the next thing we're looking for, we're looking for wise guy flow to come in on the call side. That tells us that the wise guys are doing the opposite of what the public, the retail crowd's doing. They're getting long. Okay, so that's where we look for an entry. And then what we do is we look for that setup to of that squeeze to sell into. You may get a little squeeze the next day. It may come a couple days after that. Okay, but basically you're looking to buy the weakness, sell into the squeeze. That's the playbook right now. Now you can see where you could get into trouble. Okay, if you're not acknowledging that and you're just playing the same exact way that you were playing in a market that was up every day, you know what happens? You, you'll hear the term, it's almost nauseating how much you'll hear it. Oh, this is chop. We're getting chopped up. It's chop. Yeah, it's chop. Yeah, so either... Don't allow yourself to get chopped up. Move to the sidelines. Or here's the playbook to trade in chop times. Buy the flush. Sell the squeeze. What's chop mean? What's the definition of chop? Right? Chop means the sellers get bought. The squeezes get sold off. The sellers get bought. The squeezes get sold off. And forms a choppy up and down environment. So that's the playbook now. You know, so that's what we're looking for now. And again, you know, going back to those five things, if your particular strategy can't take advantage of that, then you have to be disciplined enough to make that decision to wait for this to end. It will end. There will be a resolution, whether it's to the upside, to the downside, you know, irrelevant. We're not going to stay in CHOP forever. There will be a resolution. So basically, if you're a swing trader and you can't take advantage of that playbook, what I just showed you, you're looking. Here's a, an example we've gone over over the last couple of weeks. This was something similar. Again, I'm not. it's not a mirror image. I'm not even trying to portray that. I'm just saying this was a form of CHOP after a rally. Okay, and then the same thing, you waited for a resolution, came around here, and you got a new trend up. Okay, this might look a little bit different, chop around. Eventually, it's either going to roll completely over, you know, may chop around again at lower levels, or start a new trend higher after consolidating. We're not trying to predict that either. We're not trying to predict that. We are, you know, you evaluate 
on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for us, you know, it's looking at both sentiment and wise guy action, um, putting the two together and taking the clues on a day-to-day -day basis to see where we are now, okay? Or maybe some hints of where they're positioning, what they're positioning for. But nobody knows. Nobody has a clue out there what this market's going to be, be at in two, three months from now. If, they, if they're telling you they do, they're, they're bullshitting you. Nobody knows. The smartest minds in, in the world don't know. You think if, if somebody knew, a, a guy like George Soros wouldn't, wouldn't know this and lose a billion on shorting the last time he shorted in the upturn? You don't think he would know out of all people? But some guy on Twitter knows where the market's going to be three months from now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, you take what you have today, you have the game plan, you're always watching your risk. For some, it may be the strategy right now. Part of your strategy may mean sitting on the sidelines, and that's okay. And that's totally okay. All right. So, I mean, anybody have – I should keep the question. Anybody have any questions about these things first? Before we even start talking, because I know I'm going to get the questions on particular stocks and the market and what do you think about Tesla lottos and all that stuff. Does anybody have any questions about the five points I made here um, or any insight? Do – I mean, does this apply to you? Have you done it? Has anybody actually, um, you know, gone through a list similar to this and have an idea of um, what I'm discussing here? Hold on. I got a couple guys, and I apologize. I should have kept the questions up, but it tells you how inexperienced I am when it comes to this stuff. All right. Uh, Fenley's got a question. When you say stay small, how much do you recommend? One, Fenley, that's a great question. And two, they're, that's for you to figure out. No way for me to tell you. Here's what I can tell you. Okay? Here's what I can tell you. Small enough that you will give a long enough leash to your strategy. Okay? Long, uh, small enough that you're not paying attention to how much money you may make off that trade where both the profits and the loss won't be totally meaningless, but you're not going to lose sleep or crack a bottle of champagne over. All right? Because here's the thing. Paper tra you could do paper trading, okay? But a lot of people don't believe paper trading, and I understand the reasons why. Because when you don't have physical capital at work, the, the real emotions aren't there. You understand? So you can you can go over the basics, but emotionally you're not really in there because your money's not in there. So if you're just starting to develop a strategy, okay, basically you have one and two all figured out. Okay, you know what you're gonna do. You day trading, swing trading, position trading, be more selective, whatever it may be. You know what you need to do to find success. So, again, that's risk management, uh, trading management, and et cetera, taking profits. Now you, you, know, you just want to have enough at risk to where you're going to do what you would do in a normal trade. First of all, you should never be too big. You know, When you're losing sleep at night over a trade, you're too big, man. You're too big. You don't need to be that big. Those are for the cowboys that are looking to make a score off Tesla earnings. And like I said, that's fine. You know, that's like if I want to bet five dimes, five grand dimes, I don't know if you guys know what that means. If I want to bet 5,000 on the Mets, okay, fine. You know, I'm going to get the juices flowing. But, you know, I'm looking to get the juices flowing. So you don't want to get too emotion, uh, too emotional behind these things. So I wish I could give you a set dollar amount, but I don't know you from Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know what type of account, what type of risk you have. So basically, it's an amount where you won't lose sleep at night. You could give your strategy enough time. If you run into a loser, 
or two, you're not going to go run and just start pressing buttons on any name that comes across your screen. You can devote the time, the attention, and not be too emotionally involved. I think that's, um, that's an amount you should start off with. Don't get wrapped up into the making money part. That's what I think the issue is for a lot of people. Uh, let me see here. Where do I go? Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, I noticed Tesla moved at the 20 SMA. You and I both know the algos fire at the 20 and 30 SMA, but here's my question. Do algos fire on really high price stocks like Tesla, Amazon, and Google? I know they're programmed differently and relates to the moving average, moving average threshold. Uh, Havana, I don't know if you're talking about algo sweepers, okay? Uh, if you're asking me if Chances are we can see a call sweeper at one of those SMAs. I don't really follow moving averages. I'm not going to lie to you, you know, because it doesn't meet, it doesn't equate into my strategy. But what I'm saying is, and Havana is a member, so I mean, Havana, what you should be looking at and looking to do on a day-to-day -day basis is incorporating the wise guy activity into what you're already doing. Okay, you're an experienced trader. You found success. You know your strengths. Okay, so if SMAS support is part of your strategy and you see a sweeper come into a name that lines up, is set up like that, that should be your confirmation. You know, you're using the wise guy activity as an indicator to what you already do well. That's only going to make you a better trader. And believe it or not, that's the most success I've seen of swing traders that utilize wise guy activity is just by that incorporating the flow in what they do already okay so that means a, a name that i trade okay that i chose to trade for a day trade because i like that sweep they would ignore because it doesn't set up according to what they look at you understand that's part of again blocking out that noise because they know what they need to do to find success. You know, I mentioned, you guys heard this, you know, and not just this trader I'm about to mention, but several of them like that. There's one trader, again, I don't have a clue what he's doing. He uses Elliott Waves, goes home every night, looks at setups according to Elliott Waves. You know, I don't know what he's looking for, but as soon as he sees wise guy activity come on into those names, that's his go. The homework's done. So Apple, again, excuse me if I'm not talking Elliott Wave uh, mumbo jumbo here, but let's say Apple has five ways down. Okay, he acknowledges this the night before. He comes in, he's looking for Apple sweepers as a potential trigger to his setup. He sees an algo sweeper, uh, an algo, he sees a call sweeper in Apple, he fires. Now that trade goes according to his game plan. You understand? He's not focused on that Apple call buyer. He couldn't give two shits what that Apple call buyer does from this point. He used that aggressive wise guy sweep as a trigger, as confirmation to the work he put in already. Now, why would he do that? And by the way, the reason I bring him up is because it's unbelievable. I mean, he knocks the cover off the ball. But the reason I bring that up is because that's what wise guy activity is, really, okay? We're watching how the professionals are aggressively speculating in the options market. It's the strongest indicator of possible momentum, in my eyes, strongest real-time indicator of possible momentum coming into a name that I've ever seen throughout my 20-plus year career. So he uses that as his indicator to the work that he's already knows well and has done well of. And it's just made him that much better of a trader. Now, again, it's not about Elliott Waves. It's about whatever it is you do. Like Havana mentioned, the SMAs. He looks at specific SMAs. So you go home every night. You look at your names. You see certain names are there or close to it. You have your watch list. You're looking for sweeper activity 
to come in around those SMEs. And what that tells you, again, that's confirmation to what you already see. Because it's telling you that possibly a pro sees maybe what you're looking at. But in reality, all it means to you is there's the possibility, okay, or the high probability of momentum coming into that name. That's what sweepers are. Okay, so you see, you know, it's a different approach than what you're used to seeing, um, you know, off Twitter or any of the option, unusual option sites out there. You know, a lot of those guys push, listen, you see a big call buyer, you just tell them. That's, that's not what we do, man. That's not what we do. You know, we're looking at the overall flow throughout the day. You know what I mean? There's, I mean, I would say 95, if not more, oh, how do I do 95% of the flow should be ignored. And, and we're already screening for just the aggressive activity. We're only screening for the aggressive activity. So that means 99.9% .9 of the unusual activity you hear people out there talking about should be ignored. Okay, so you're looking again, depending on your style, and it goes back to this, guys. It go, That's why I bring this up. It goes back to this. Know what style, know what type of trader you are, and what you need to look for. This call sweeper in Baba may not mean shit to me, but according to what you saw and what you already looked at, could be your confirmation. And that's that's the proper way wise guy activity should be looked at. Now, listen, you can trade just off the flow, okay? Yeah, you could. The sharper sweepers, you're going to see more momentum, okay? The better looking bets, you're going to have a higher probability of success trading off of them. But there's more than that. There's more than that out there. You know, that's what a lot of people don't share with you. There's more than that. When you incorporate it into your style, your strategy, just like any other indicator, I'm sure you guys use indicators. What do you guys use? Throw some indicators at me. Okay, I know the basis, the MACD. Okay, I know a lot of you people look at that. What am I typing in MACD? You know, the uh, MACD you guys look at. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's enough indicators out here. Hold on. Like, look at all this stuff. Look at all these indicators out there. So many, right? RSI, stochastics. I'm telling you that wise guy activity can be the most powerful indicator you came across your whole entire trading career in real time. I know I sound biased, but I'm telling you, it's not a crystal ball. You can't tail every single wise guy sweeper and expect to make money off it by holding it through expiration. I mean, come on. But I'm saying every single indicator out there, name them. Name your favorite indicator you found success with. That's how this should be used, and I can promise you it can only benefit your trading. It's not going to make it worse. It's not going to make it worse that some professional out there is aggressively sweeping multiple exchanges to own the name you're eyeing, right? But, you know, at the same time, you can't think it's some crystal ball that's going to predict what's going to happen over the next three months. Once you, listen, once you're in this game long enough like I've been, guys, you know that doesn't exist. Maybe that's what it is. I know it doesn't exist. You know, people go searching for it. They, you see it all day long, people looking for that stuff. There's no such thing. No such thing. It's about finding that little edge that gets you to the point where you can win more than you lose and then just staying disciplined enough to stick with that strategy over the course of time. That's all it is. That's what separates... You know, traders who come and go in this game from the pros. 
All right, uh, we got other questions here. I got to get to these because uh, I like to ramble sometimes. Um, for each day, how do you prep for scenario chop, etc.? Is it based on uh, put the core ratio prior with day wise guy? That's a great activity. Uh, how do you prep basically for the type of trading environment you may be in? And again, it's hard to predict. Okay, you, it's just you don't want to get into that game of prediction. But I look at, you know, flow is, is tough to get an indication of because when things are bullish, and you know this, Ani, because you follow flow for a while, when you're bullish, when the market's bullish, there's going to be bullish flow throughout. There's not going to be some wise guy holding up a sign, that's it, we're done. You know, what they do is, they get in, they press, they roll, they press, they roll. And at the top, there's always going to be a batch of calls that go under. But they don't care about that because what they're doing is they're pressing and rolling and taking profits the whole entire move up. You know, that's how they kill it on these rallies. They, they don't try to predict the top. They just keep pressing and rolling, pressing and rolling until the music stops but you could see now you know you could see here okay after a move like this we were looking if you remember I mean, we were looking at overall sentiment out there longer term sentiment was at a bullish extreme remember I mean if you looked at anything from a CNN fear greed thing which is actually pretty useful even though it's CNN don't think it's garbage but um, you know to smart money dumb money indicators out there uh, anything that measures uh, positions, you know, positional sentiment, more than that shorter-term stuff we look at, it was at bullish extremes, and for good reason, right? I mean, look at the market. If if this market continues to do this, we're going to be at 100,000 in three months. So more than likely, there's going to be some pause, some consolidation, a pullback. All right, so... You want to limit your risk, Ani, as this rally goes longer without a correction. You know, another thing we spoke about. Then you see here that we're in some a different phase here, right? This is different than this here. We pull back. You see, you know what's a good indicator for you, Ani? I know you're a swing trader. You'll see some of your swings not performing the way they should. No follow through. Um, you have less of a selection of names that set up according to what you look at. You know, like we said, you had Apple, all these names at nosebleeds, right? So you don't want to necessarily initiate a new position up here, per se. You wait for a pullback or some consolidation. So these are all the things you, you, you start to get a feel for, okay? Or maybe just simply you ran into a couple of losers. That didn't perform, you know, maybe you got stopped out, you know, like the definition of chop, maybe you got stopped out a little bit more than you should have. That's an indication the markets are getting choppy. Yeah, and then it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You either want to move to the sidelines in a larger way, or if you could take advantage of being quicker. You know, so there's no set thing, Ani, and there's no such thing, you know that. You know that. And you know if I told you there was that I would be lying to you because as long as you know me, I've been telling you there's never something that is going to alert you at the top and tell you game over. There's just nothing out there. Okay? You limit your risk. You stay smaller like we mentioned. Okay? And here's an example. Okay, what I'm saying now. Because uh, I know probably it's within the questions. I'm telling you that the playbook here that I know is you buy the weakness when sentiment lines up, right? So when you get that flush and you get retail, the retail crowd moving towards the put side, betting on further downside or bet, you know, protect, scrambling for protection, what you want to do is look for an entry into that flush of bullish wise guy activity again and that's important you know not to just sell my product but it's important because 
How do you know this? In other words, what's telling you the selling may be done? Like if you guys remember um, the pre-election bottom, okay, what happened was the flow here, there were put sweepers, the flow turned for the worse, okay? Uh, you had everybody, the retail crowd, pretty bearish, right? You had selling in the market. Everything was aligned. Everything was bearish. But something changed. I still have the box off right here. Something changed right at that box. What it was, was the wise guy sweepers all of a sudden started to get bullish. We started to see, instead of VXX call buying and VIX call buying like we would normally see, we started to see VXX size put sweepers, UVXY size put sweepers, betting on downside in volatility. IWM was getting lit up with put sweepers selling People hated IWM. All of a sudden, at the same exact time, we started to see IWM call sweepers come in. You understand? So there's that divergence. Now, the retail crowd's still bearish. Price is bearish, but the pros are starting to take the other side here. Okay, and this is a major sell-off. Okay, so... You may be early, but again, these are things you have to understand. You look for an entry, you can manage your risk. Options are a great thing to utilize in a sell-off like this, you know, because you may be early. You're early, and you look, again, for that squeeze. Here, you would have got really lucky because the squeeze was vicious, uh, but this, again, this is heavy selling. We're not there yet, so we don't want to jump the gun. So basically, the trade here, okay, you buy when sentiment and the wise guy activity align, okay, and you look to sell the quick squeeze. Now, if this turns into that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to see call sweepers out to wazoo. You're going to see wise guy activity out, out to wazoo if this thing is going to take off and start a new trend. And then what you'll see is as this thing step ladders or grinds higher on every little pullback, you're going to see wise guy sweepers there. But the safe play right now is to do that. You know, again, when sentiment and wise guy activity align, you buy the weakness and you look to sell the quick pop. You buy the weakness, look to sell the quick pop. And, Ani, it may not be worth it for you. You understand? You may be saying, ah, is it even worth it? If it's not, then just wait. Just wait. Trust me. It'll be pretty obvious when it's a better time to play. Just wait. Uh, let me get to a couple of questions here quickly. Uh, how many stocks do you watch uh, at a time? Zero. Honestly. Like, here's basically, I got, I mean, I got this and a bunch of other things up, but I'm watching the flow. So I'm watching the flow throughout the day. Uh, you know, a lot more flow than, than this here. You know, I'm watching everything, even the small little sweepers. So that's what I got my eyes on. Um, usually throughout the day, I'm, I got, oh, I pulled up the wrong screen. I got this screen up, one of these screens. So, you know, I got um, this put the call. I got several others. I look at that basically are the same thing, just break it down, uh, a better look intraday. Um, you know. This is it. I mean, there's a list of stocks here, but I'm not looking at them. You know, because for me, Ani, for me, basically, um, the two, my, for me, the strongest signal that I can possibly see is sentiment at bearish extreme and wise guy call sweepers. That's as bullish a signal for me as I can possibly see. So that's what I focus on, you know, and as you get further away from that, the signal obviously is just less strong until you get the other side where, you know, sentiment's at a bullish extreme. So that's, that's what I'm focusing on, basically, is sentiment and flow, uh, nothing else. But every one of us is different.
Uh, what? Let me see here. Who'd I miss? If I miss somebody, if you want to, uh, all right. So a couple of you guys were mentioning um, the indicators, right? Volume, RSI, the DMI, the ADX. All right, and you know, I'm sure you use them. I don't know how much success you found with them, but I'm saying if you use Wise Guy Activity as an indicator form, it's going to change the way you look at things. Okay, so just look as you would look at, let's say, RSI or anything else, it doesn't mean every single wise guy call buyer you're going to take action and buy. Okay, but again, you may be looking at Netflix. Oh, you know, I really like this setup in Netflix. I'm trying to find an entry. A lot of people in the room have done that. They're pissed because there hasn't been any Netflix sweepers. I, you know, uh, Mike in the room, a lot of you guys know that. He, he curses out the Netflix sweepers every day because he wants to get involved in Netflix for a trade, and there hasn't been any Netflix sweepers. But you see, he's, and again, he's a successful trader and has been with me for a while. I mean, he doesn't act unless he sees wise guy activity confirming what he likes. He's not just tailing any wise guy action. So, hypothetically, he likes biotechs, okay? He likes where biotechs are aligned. So, he's looking, you know, for a sweeper in a biotech name that he may like to trade. You know, Lucci does this so well. You know, uh, an example, he, let's say he likes the ags. He sees the ags have been consolidating, doing nothing, you know? And, and Lucci would just wait until he sees, you know, potash, mosaic, CF, coal sweepers. You know, he'll wait for that confirmation. It's a lot, it's a lot more efficient when it's done that way. And it's, a, you know, you're already used to your strategy. You already do things well. And when you use it as a confirmation, it's such a smooth transition. Like I said, it's not going to make you a worse trader because you have professional aggressive money pretty much confirming what you were looking at. And, and you don't need much. You don't need to be some option aficionado. You understand? Because you already done the homework. You're using it as a trigger. You don't need to follow the call buyer in open interest, which means shit. What does it mean? How do you know what the guy's doing behind the scenes? He could be shorting the living daylights out of the stock for all we know. So you don't need to pay attention to that. You're going to trade that name according to your game plan. Like you would trade it without a call sweeper, but now you have a call sweeper behind you. This game is all about probabilities, guys. You know, when you raise the odds just a little bit in your favor, that, that's all it takes. Yeah, traders, they don't, a lot of new traders don't understand that. They think it's about winner after winner after winner and hitting the ball out of the park every time and, and making that score on Micron earnings. You know, if you're serious about this game, it's not about that. Talk to any professional trader out there. It's not about that. It's tilting the odds just a little bit in your favor because that's all you can do. You tilt them a little bit in your favor, and all of a sudden you got something where you can enjoy and make money. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I love this game, you know, but I know at the same time there's stuff I got to do to make money in this game. I would love to trade Facebook, Spy, VIX, and all this shit. I'm a bigger degenerate than all you guys. But I know, you know, I'm not going to make any money doing it. Uh, let me get to just a couple more questions here, and um, we'll wrap it up. Jesus, on tape reading, many times I've noticed when we hit a round number like 25, okay, on XYZ, for example, there will be huge size on the ask, and it'll get attacked aggressively, swept up, and will cause a breakout, but then falls back under. Why would such strength be, where is it? Oh, be faded, or is it fake strength? Yeah, you know, I think when you're getting at it, a lot of times, they're trying to hold the name down. You know, a lot of times they're trying to hold the name down for whatever reason it may be. Uh, they're trying to hold the they're holding that particular name down. Now, again, if if tape reading is part of the equation in your style, 
then, you know, maybe it's something to focus on. But I, I don't even pay attention to that stuff, really, you know, when it comes to me trading. Like, there's a lot of stuff I look at. You guys see me on Twitter. I post a million different things. I use none of that for trading. You know, like I said earlier, the only thing I trade off of is sentiment and wise guy activity. I want to be most aggressive when I got sentiment in my favor and wise guy call sweepers. That's when I want to be most aggressive. And I want to be least aggressive when sentiment is on the other side, period. And that's how I approach every day. So we come into the day, and you guys hear me, and I post the sentiment charts for those of you who are members. Um, if sentiment's in my favor, I always mention I'm going to be a little less selective because I want to be aggressive because there's a high probability of a squeeze coming into any weakness. And then, you know, if sentiment's on the other side where people are too bullish, I tell you guys, I, I don't want to chase green. I'm going to be more selective because there's a higher probability that they may fade them. And, you know, it sounds simple. It is, guys. If I don't keep it simple, I get in trouble. You know, the more thinking I do, I've realized throughout the, my career, the more I have to think about stuff, the more trouble I get into. So that's that's basically my approach every day. Uh, what do I miss? Did I miss anybody? I apologize if we do. What new service does Wall Street Jesus use? Uh, quotes and, and stuff like that. I'm Wall Street Jesus. I'm not saying Lucci, but um, saying Lucci is the name of the company, and we call saying Lucci Lucci. But uh, you're talking. This is Wall Street Jesus speaking. If that's what you're asking. Second, you know, I use this. What is this? TC2000. I I, I mean, I, I subscribe to everything, guys. I got uh, Thinkorswim. I use. I got E Trade. I use uh, Sentiment Trader. I use. I use a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, again, not everything. Uh, I, I trade off of, uh, but I use a lot of this stuff. This is basically uh, my basic on top of Thinkorswim. You know, you got a variety of stuff. I like the charts on here. They're pretty clean, uh, not too confusing, uh, intraday stuff. You know, so that's pretty much uh, all I use here. I'm a simple guy. Uh, hold on. I don't want to leave too many questions out. I apologize. Hold on. I'm new here. What's this wise guy activity about? I don't use it again. Wise guy activity basically is aggressive option order flow. Okay, so you see here. These are call buyers, put buyers, list goes on and on. So what we're paying attention to basically is what the pros are aggressively speculating on in the options market throughout the day. Now, again, there are days like Friday, as you can see, where the overall flow is mixed, okay, because there's a lot of hedging going on. You got the healthcare thing and all that stuff. So, you know, there are days that flow tell us do nothing. Then there are days where you'll see green, 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 green all over the board and the market's weak, and that's a terrific opportunity. You know, yeah, then there's bets in names like a Tesla November bet that we saw it on Friday, you know, that pique our interest. So this is just flow. Basically, in real time, we're seeing every aggressive bet that hits the board in the options market. Every aggressive order that gets printed in the option market, we're seeing in real time. You know, and then again, according to what strategy and what type of trader you are, you look to incorporate that in, into your style. For me, it's a powerful confirmation indicator of possible momentum coming into a name. That's how I use it. I went over several examples of how others use it. Some people, guys, some people use it as just sentiment alone, just for sentiment reasons alone. Uh, there are people that look at wise guy activity. And the perfect example of that, again, is simple. If 
the market is selling. Okay, if you got sellers in the market and the market's red, you have the Dow down 100, NASDAQ down 30. Okay, and the market's breaking lows of the day. You have sentiment, retail sentiment out there in the options market. Everyone's bearish, right? There's more put buying than call buying. The market's weak. That makes sense. All of a sudden, you start to see aggressive call buying now come into the market. Yeah, that that's the opportunity. Again, that's the strongest signal out there. When you see basically this is a good example right here. I don't know what day this was. 322 uh yeah, so go look at 322 uh if you get a chance, but you'll see basically the market selling, retail selling, and the professionals getting bullish buying into the weakness. That divergence is, you know, what you're looking for as far as sentiment and creates the opportunity. So if you're an ES trader or you're trading SPY intraday, okay, that's some a spot where you're looking for entry. So again, there's a variety of ways this information can be used. Um, you know, we could go over that, and we will go over that. We're going to do this every Saturday. So you guys, um, I hope you guys come around. Uh, you know, if anything, hit me up or hit the Lucci gang up on things you would like us to talk about, um, and we could do that, okay, because there's so many different elements, so many different styles. Uh, today, basically, I just wanted to hit on what you need to start off at, okay, the initial stages before you start asking me about particular flow particular orders in a name you need to figure out this first know what you want to be know what type of player you want to be what type of trader understand the things you have to do and list them you know as far as risk management uh, when to trade when not to trade how to maybe an approach to take profits write them down Okay, and then again, stay small so you're not emotionally wrapped up. Remain focused. Come in every day. Give it a legitimate time so you see different market environments, how you react. And be patient, obviously, because it doesn't happen overnight, and you're not going to get rich overnight. So I think these five things, even if you're thinking about um, giving the steam rule a whirl for the first month, again, 50% off there for the first month, um, if you're looking to give it a whirl, make sure you have those things, have an idea of what you're looking to do, and you, you'll start to see the light. You'll start to see how this information provides, can provide an edge, okay? And then you can, then you can start thinking clear. Um, but at the same time, this is stuff we talk about a lot. Uh, we do webinars all day long, live audio, video all day long. Uh, so we go over these things constantly. So it's not like you're figuring out that list and just rolling in there hoping you got it. Uh, this is stuff we work on every single day. So, All right, so again, WallStreetJesus.com, you could just go to that. And there's a lot of free stuff on there, I told you. I post market updates every day, both uh, pre- and post-market on all the activity. Snap, bullish bet, near the close yesterday. See why bull flow, so you can catch up on all the action there. All right, guys. Uh, again, next Saturday we'll do it again. You have any recommendations uh, you like to talk about? Hit up the Sang Lucci crew. Let me know. Uh, until then, I'll see most of you in the room. Uh, for everybody else, have a great week. Uh, trying to make some money. Have a good weekend, everybody.